G'day guys, welcome to 138 of Life on the Hulls. I'm Ross, I'm building a foam core composite sailing catamaran, uh, pretty much on my own and with a little bit of help as it comes in, but uh, I'm standing here in my engine room. Now you can see here I've got my bearers all in and this area has now been flocated out ready for those large modules and that's what this episode we're going to finish the reinforcement of those start getting them ready to insert into this space here i've flocated out all the bilges here to make to allow for waterproofing and for the flow of water down to my bilge uh, bilge pumps now i've had the motors in and out uh, basically to get the alignment correct I have my positions for them on the bearers here I also have the angle of exit there at seven degrees we initially thought it was eight but it's worked out to be seven I'll discuss that later on uh, why they have to be at seven degrees but it is a shaft drive boat and then this week I've been working on the, the deadwood section, increasing the thickness and the rigidity of that rear skeg down there where the shaft is going to ultimately exit the boat. Later on in this episode, we're going to be taking you to the long-awaited sailing trip in the Whit Sundays. At the end of each episode for the next three or four weeks, I'm going to put a little bit of our sailing trip in there just so you can get a feel for what it's like to sail up in the Whit Sunday Islands, which is our prime cruising grounds in Australia here. It's a beautiful area we've got some incredible sailing and lots of wind and uh, and lots going on so for now don't forget to subscribe don't forget to like and uh let's get into it lots of templating going on here and basically reinforcing the engine bay modules here and it takes me around about an hour to get all the cloths cut for the regions i need to reinforce so this is all dry here now and then i'll just go in and hit it all in one big laminating session taking about half a day to reinforce each of these modules. It certainly paid off because it's made them nice and light for me, lifting them in and out of the boat as I've needed to. But uh, yeah, you can see here the uh, plywood mounts here for being able to screw um, uh, water locks, mufflers, strainers, hoses, anything has essentially been essential to put these parts in. And then I've basically got the cloths cut ready. I just need to mix up the resin, just slap it on, roll it on. It doesn't need to be overly neat because it's already consolidated and pretty strong as it is, as with this big module over here. So I've done a fair amount of work here this week. It's actually been a good week. I've got my engine bearers in, I've got uh, these modules out and I've almost finished these parts. So uh, certainly uh, lots to do. I'm gonna get in and try and get these done the Savo before the day's out. And then uh, coming back in on Monday, I've got a, a weekend off with the kids and then I'm gonna come back in on Monday and get this done. I've got Sam O down here today. We did the concrete posts out the front there, but Sam's a civil engineer by trade. He sort of moved on to another type of career path, but. We're having a very interesting conversation about composites in concrete. That's what his specialty was all way back when, wasn't it? Yeah, five years ago. Dams and roads and things like that. But uh, now he's moved on to um, you know analysts and strategies and stuff. But very interesting when you're talking about fiberglass being involved and, uh, and incorporated into concrete structures and the tension and the stress loads on different structures. It's a concrete porous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it lifts in water and air. Yeah. And so the steel reinforcement actually corrodes where fiberglass doesn't. So you're saying they use fiberglass in concrete structures to avoid corrosion? Part of it, yeah. Right, yeah, part of it. So, but it, it fails quicker. Oh, yeah. sorry, it fails more catastrophic than steel. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It doesn't have any elongation, so you can't see it failing. Yeah, it's okay. Not, that makes total fire. sense. Yeah, right. And that means people die. And he, and he asked me why we were reinforcing these things. And it's not about strength, because this is a purely a decorative piece, these engine modules I've got. It's all about not having the friggin' thing vibrating on the side of the hull side when you're driving along. That's what, uh, that's what I'm about. Do you agree with that, eh, mate? Yeah, vibration is not, not a man's best friend. It's hard to wet out this stuff, isn't it? This is a... Uh, Nitex, it's actually a four layered quadraxial with um, with chop matting in it. So I think they call it a 1708 over in the States is what they they term it. Let me know what you think of laminating, Sam. It's been a while. Three <laughs> years while. since he's laminated. Tell me tell me what you told me about laminating earlier on about the way that I'm building the boat. Come on, tell me exactly, come on, tell me exactly what you said. You said it's meditative, and I said, I don't know about meditative, but it just doesn't feel like the most efficient way to do this. And, and how could I increase the efficiency of the build here? I know I've been, so what we've been doing, we've been reinforcing this module and even making the module. I reckon Sam's got a pretty good process. What do you reckon? I hate someone to do it. <laughs> 
know. You reckon mechanising this system oh, would be yeah. a better... How would you mechanise it? What would be the... Make it a robot or something? A robot. Oh, I'll probably vacuum infusion, yeah, I reckon, might be the go. One off, I'm prepared to bite it, but if I was building another one, I'd be vacuum infusing every single one of these modules, and so, then Sam might get involved, but he's not real impressed with the efficiency. He's, he's all about efficiency, aren't you? How can we do it with the least amount of work? Least amount <laughs> of work and the least amount don't of effort. Don't mind doing the work as long as it's useful work. Yeah, he, he's not into the process. He's into getting it done as quick as, he, as possible and as cheaply as possible, and I guess, you know, he's right, and that's, uh, that's how this build is, basically. It's all about meticulous handwork and yet very labour intensive. And that's why we pay so much money for these boats. Okay, so we want to do a bit of a dry fit on these uh, engine beds, but what our engine made module, what we're going to do, we're going to do a hole saw through here because we're going to try and work out, we want to put a bulkhead just behind here, but I want to integrate that into the hull down in there rather than have a separate bulkhead. I want it to actually help to integrate the module to the hull and uh, the only way we're going to be able to do it this actually is an inspection hatch for the actual deadwood or the uh other um shaft composite tube that i'm going to put through this module and then out into the boat itself so essentially uh we're going to do a drill a hole in here and then give it a bit of a quick test fit and then uh, i'll be able to glass that bulkhead in okay this is take two because we filmed that side and the mic was dead and the camera was dead so God knows what we're going to end up with here. But anyway, uh, I'm going to turn it around. Around, come around. Big double, big double, big shot. Go in here. Hang on, let me get my strappy. We're trying to keep it out of that slot. Yeah, I know. That's... Get it up on that. Very intense conversation going on here. John's down in the engine room here. We're trying to work out how to locate the uh, the engine shaft or the the shaft in the back of the motor, from the motor to the back of the mould. Now we've worked out we can't do it with the module in place. We have to lift the module out, position the engine, then find the uh, the rear point where the shaft or the the conduit that carries the shaft is going to go. And well, what's going to happen, mate? Module out. Yep. Engine in. Engine in, yep. Get out, I'll bolt the engine down. Ah. Well, we're going to find the exact position. Do you yeah. have to bolt it down? No. No, it's 300 kilos, 250 kilos. It can just sit there. So it'll be the same position as bolting in and sitting it on? Yeah, we're going to find the exact positions for the motor. We'll get our eight degrees to the shaft. Yeah, eight degrees down through here, but remember the module's not here, so it's going to get out through the back. We need to find a pinpoint position on the end of the hole here. And then, what's next? We drill that hole in the um, in the mould. Yep, correct. And then we get that right. We pull the engine out. Yep. Module comes in. Yep. You can fix the module in. Yep. It's the last time it's got to go in. That's right. And then we can find our original hole in just, the module. Just itself. by finding the angle again. Eight off. degrees. Just another. Exactly. You might be able to use it with a laser level. Yeah. So what I'm planning to do is fit the mod. I uh, fit the motor here. Find my engine points, my mount points, and I'll mark them, or even do a light drill into the wood, so I've got exact positions. Two engine fittings. Yep. And then I've pretty much got the motor positioned. Then this can all be flow coated underneath here. Fitting to tidy it up and uh, and glued in where necessary and this this uh, bulkhead is going to basically form here the second structure to the shaft tube so we've got the shaft tube mounting through the hole here through the back of the stern and another one here which secures it and then the shaft will drive through the middle and then uh, the coupling for the gearbox is right there just a little bit of double handling that's all 
Yeah, but that's okay. So we need to get uh, get the crane out and get a motor in here, and that's that's the next yes. thing I need to do after I uh, do a bit of restorative work here. Sunday, we'll have a barbecue and we'll put the motor in with a few beers. <laughs> Sounds good. That's it. I don't know whether we're putting be having beers while I'm putting my motor after in. After we put the motor in, yeah, we'll have beers. Good idea. Time when I'm making these videos, I'm trying to explain stuff that really has no relevance to real life, and that is like these things, these these engine modules. If you look at them. In a real life situation, they mean nothing to anybody other than me. So I'm trying to explain how I'm doing something for an audience that, uh, you know, whether or not you understand it or not is a bit difficult. So a lot of the time I'm reiterating and, and, and trying to discuss and sort of regurgitate information that's gone through my head. Sometimes I'm hoping it comes clear to you guys out there in the field. And uh, in this case, I'll just show you these, these two bulkheads these things here on both of these engine modules have to be epoxied to the module so that the module is integrated to the hull otherwise i'm just going to be slattering bog all over it and sticking it in and hoping to god that it's going to fix the other thing too is where that hole is there that's actually going to have an eight inch hatch in there that i'll then be able to laminate a tabbing on the top of this and and actually tab it to the skeg section of the hull. And that's pretty important because what that's gonna do is it's going to center the module and, uh, and essentially make it one piece with the hull itself uh, so that I don't end up with vibration, uh, any sort of hull movement or wobbling or, or the works throughout the hull because there'd be nothing worse than running my engine and have a piece of fiberglass going dun, 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 dun. So th that is the sort of thing I'm trying to preempt or prevent at any time during the build. So you can see here now, there's lots of reinforcement going on here. These modules are ready to go in. I've got a few things I need to do before I do that and that is as follows. See by my filleting and tabbing this part, if this is glued to this and this is filleted and tabbed heavily on this side, it's going to form the second part of what I'd call a dead wood section of the shaft tube. Because it's not a wooden boat or it doesn't have a huge amount of solid material here, between here and the end of the shaft, I have an air space here. This needs to be as strong as houses as well as the back of the boat as well. So that's what I'm working on there. Very important that I can get that glued on in the exact position. And now I can start to work on some further areas on the mold on this, uh, on this module here. I can actually put in a foam rebate there, another one there, there, and obviously on the other side there, which is then going to butt up against those engine bearers to allow me to fill them and fit this thing so that it's all secure. So after all that cutting, I've come up with these pieces of foam. These are 20 mil foam. It's got one layer of 600 double bias and a layer of 300 on it. And that's going to be glued here to the edge of the module here. And, uh, and that little piece up the top there will sort of intersect there. That'll then be glued to the bearer itself. Okay, the next really important part, I've got to put this uh, bulkhead into place up on the top of this engine module. Now, it's very important. I've actually got two screw holes. I've left the screws there. I'm going to put the epoxy down, and now I'm going to basically screw it back in place so that it's in exactly the same position. It is so important that I find that position so I don't, the module's not going to fit in the skeg of my shaft section. So I've basically got some epoxy mixed up here. I'm actually going to mix it onto the actual engine bay instead of the bulkhead because I intend to get a nice fillet in here and uh, and I would probably prefer to glass it back to the module as well ensuring that I've got a good bond between this the module and then ultimately this side will be tabbed to the actual hull of the boat so that'll squarely position that module in exactly the position I need it and then from there I'm able to then go through the hatch in the top there once it's a bit bigger once I get that eight inch hatch on there and I'll be able to tab it in place flow coat it get it finished 
then to put my uh, my shaft tube through. So lots to do in here. I've been working pretty hard on these modules all week and I'm so happy with the way that we've come up with the way that I can actually put it in place. Well, so we're up in Ely Beach and I've just uh, been shopping for the alcohol. Tracy and Janet have sent us for the booze. Okay, the provisioning is done. John's had a little sleep while we did the provisioning. And Janet and Tracy did all the hard work and well, they all went and had another coffee. <laughs> now he gets to do a bit of work. He hasn't done anything all day. I do something all the time, mate. My brain is not stopped. Anyone would think we're going caravanning, but we're not. <laughs> yes, look at that. That's a lot of food. Sorry. How many more we got? A lot more to go yet. Yeah, we've got about three trolley pools. Stuff on top of each other. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Our home for twelve days. Yes, yeah. they've got that. iPod leave, yes. Binoculars, yep. yellow, yep. yeah. So you're not going to lose your night vision because you're not driving. Not anyway, not to. <laughs> so you're not going to lose your night vision. Well, you might, but it won't matter because we're okay. Tim's just doing a bit of uh, emergency splicing here for a minute. Take it, we're going to get his quality of splicing going here. Oh, yeah. No fit. <laughs> he's got no fit, but he's got to do it anyway. He's got fingers like fids, eh? Tough life, eh, Johnny? It's so worth, it's worth the 30 hour drive, though. Because <laughs> Tim did a really good job, he was concise enough without disturbing your ego. <laughs> ego. <laughs> the ego has been. We worried about it. your ego all morning. <laughs> Thinking, Jesus, how long is this going to last? <laughs> but no, he handled it alright. He nutted out a few things. As soon as it jives, huh? Oh, you gotta let it out again, let it out one more, sorry. Guys are working hard. <laughs> working hard, huh? Well oiled machine. Look at this. This is it. You want some Branston pickle? No, I don't want Branston pickle. That is crap. Oh, I'm I know you like it, but please don't give it to me. Yeah, no, I, I could be converted over this trip, you know. Do you want you know? ham or pork? Uh, pork? Or cheese. You want pork. So what's going on here, guys? Sundowner time. Sundowners. Anyone for ice? Tracy's been slaving away over this uh, cheese platter for the last few hours. We're going to have some Jack. <laughs> oh, that looks unreal. Hello, John. 
Cheers. Cheers, Biggies. Cheers, Sundar. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, Jan. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers camera lady. This is mean. I want to have my drink. <laughs> Take two. Cheers. So real. Fantastic. <laughs> what a spot. Oh, oh bad. That's really good. We've got it to Cheers. ourselves. It's our anchorage for the night. The treasure hunter's been out for his um, daily collection of shit. What have you scored, mate? Oh, yeah, you bought an oar. And That's... I've got a little noodle. What a score. <laughs> hey. Well, That's what I used to say. That's what Betty Hill used to say. Get me an oar. And then he'd run back with a prostitute. <laughs> So what have I got? Oh God, what are we going to do with all that crap? You've got, John <laughs> came back. You've got the little spanking paddle. Oh, right. A spanking paddle. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> right, I'm, I'm hoping we're going to have another different boat for tonight. Because we're going to need to be in a long way away from this pair yeah, because of a spanking <laughs> paddle. <laughs> John's fantasizing again. That was a nice little um, hour of stand-up paddle boarding and swimming. Bit of snorkeling, pretty good over there. Beautiful. I walk climbed up the hill. Would you like me to shower you off? <laughs> you can walk to the other side or up on the cliff. Oh yeah, nice. There's lots of little cuttlefish in the water down yeah. there. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's a. Uh, Did you have a snorkel spot. over there? Yeah. Yeah, nice. Snorkel. Brilliant. Nice and clear. Cool. A couple of uh, turtles. Yeah, we saw a few. Yeah. A couple Very of big nice. blue rats over here. It was good. I'm just going to have a look under the boat and uh, check out what they got down under here. Yeah, I had a good look. It's nice and clean. Is it? Yeah. I'd like to just charge at 1500 at least, so... And what we've got a bit here... <laughs> just trimming ourselves properly, Ross didn't set them properly. <laughs> Again. Oh. <laughs> you were up there digging with it. <laughs> I'm absolutely knackered. It's been a huge day. I don't know. I got up this morning and like five minutes of paddle boarding, breakfast, bacon, and eggs. <laughs> Fuck, this day's just doing me in. I'm exhausted. And look at this lot. <laughs> yeah, it's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> Sunset at Stonehaven. I mean, it's incredible, isn't it, guys? Um, yeah, beautiful. Yeah. There's been a few, few alcoholic beverages that, uh, to enjoy the sunset. <laughs> <laughs>